Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And now we've got to the very last question, question number 10 from this October 2021 International A-Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P4 paper. Now this question here is about a topic which many students are afraid of, which they shouldn't be. It's a topic which is relatively new. It was not in the old C4 nor in the old C3-4 um, specifications. It's called proof by contradiction. Just like proof um, in P2 is new, proof in P4 is also new. And in P4, we have to learn about proof by contradiction, which is a bit of a, a strange concept, but it's not too difficult. So here, they've given us actually an example of how it works in the part A, and we have to just fill in one line of it. That's pretty simple. So it says, a student's attempt to answer the question prove by contradiction that if n cubed is even, then n is even. So first of all, let's understand what this means. We have to prove that this statement is true. That if n is an even number and you cube it, you're going to end up with an even number, basically. So if n cubed is even, then what you cubed to get that even number must have been even itself. That's what we have to prove is true. But we have to prove it true in a bit of a strange way. We have to prove it by contradiction. So we have to first kind of make an assumption that um, something opposite than this is true, something that contradicts this is true. So we have to assume, as a student has, that there exists a number n such that n cubed is even, but n itself is odd, that you've taken an odd number, you've cubed it, and you've got an even number. Okay, so we've got to show basically that this, this statement that we've made Okay, which contradicts what we're trying to prove will lead us to something which does not make sense. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So, of course, if n is odd, now an odd number is always going to be something which is either one more or one less than a multiple of two. Because even numbers are multiples of two. Odd numbers, you add one to an even number, you get an odd number. You take away one from an um, even number, you get an odd number. So if we say that if n is odd, then n equals two times an integer plus 1, then for sure n is an odd number. So p is an element of the integers, n equals 2p plus 1, n must be odd. Okay, that's, proof, that's showing that n is odd. Okay, now if we want to cube this odd number, so we're taking this odd number, we're cubing it, all right, we're going to end up with 2p plus 1 all cubed. If you cube it, they've already done it for us, it gives you 8p cubed plus 12p squared plus 6p plus 1, and this is a line that we have to uh, fill in. Okay, so now, according to our, uh, our wrong assumption, this number is going to end up as an even number. We've got an odd number, we've cubed it, and it should become even according to what we, we assumed. However, we can see that this is not going to be an even number. The, uh, and this is not going to be an even number because this is definitely an odd number. Because if you take these three first, the, th the first three terms of this, 2 is a common factor of them. So I'll take 2 times 4p cubed plus 6p squared, plus 3p, can close the bracket, plus 1. This is 2 times an integer, because if p is an integer, 3p is an integer, p squared is an integer, 6p squared is an integer, p cubed will be an integer, so will be 4 times p cubed. If you add 3 integers together, you have an integer, and 2 times an integer gives you an even number, and you've got an even number plus 1, so this is odd. This is odd. So we have a contradiction. So this contradicts our initial assumption. We, we assumed here that, you know, n is odd, then n cubed is going to be even. But when n, n is odd, n cubed didn't become even. n became odd. So that means our initial assumption, that the assumption that we made, okay, is contradicted. Therefore, the original statement is true. If n cubed is even, then n is even. So we prove this by contradiction. Okay, simple little, um, you know, mark, one mark for just writing this, factorizing the first three terms, taking two out to show that this is, uh, this part of this expression is even, and then you add one to it, the one that's added to it makes the whole thing odd. So our, if n is, if, if we start with an odd number, we cubed it, we didn't get an even number, so this must be false, therefore it must be true that if n is even, then n cubed will also be even. So if n cubed is even, then n must have been even for us to get that even number. Okay, now, then it says part B. Hence, prove by contradiction that 
the cube root of 2 is irrational. So hence, hence means using this. How are we going to use this? Well, let's see how this works. Let's make a start on this and we'll see that we're going to have to use what we just proved up there. Okay, hence proved by contradiction again that the cube root of 2 is irrational. So we know that, okay, let's say, let's assume the opposite. Let's assume that the cube root of 2 is rational. Okay, let's assume that the cube root of 2 is rational. Therefore, we can say that the cube root of 2 is going to be a over b, where a is an element of the integers and b is an element of the integers. So they're both in, um, integers and we can say, and also we can say that 8 over b is in simplest form. So that's what a rational number is. Okay, this is very important for us to realize that this is basically what a rational number is. This is what a rational number is. A rational number is a number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers in the simplest form. Okay, so this, um, if, that, if, uh, if we can show that this is contradicted, then we've proved that root 2 is not rational and it's irrational because we have to see, uh, that's what we have to try to do. We've got to show that this leads to something that doesn't make sense. Okay, that this is contradicted. All right, that a over b is n is is a, a product is a quotient of two integers, but if they're not in the simplest form, then this will be proved false and this will be proved true, which is what we're trying to do. So let's follow on from this. Um, let's multiply both sides by b. So we have b times the cube root of two equals a, and let's cube both sides. If you cube both sides, you're going to get b cubed times two equals a. So we can say therefore a is equal to 2, 2 times b cubed, all right, 2 times b cubed, a cubed, sorry, a cubed is equal to 2 times b cubed. Now, if a cubed equals 2 b cubed, and b is an integer, that means a cubed is even, okay, a cubed is even, because um, <clears throat> if you have 2 times an integer, it's going to be even. All right, so a cubed is even, so therefore we can say a is even, and that's using from part a. This is from part a, from part a of the question. All right, we, we've basically proved that if n cubed is even, then n is also even. So that's where, we, that's where the hence comes from. So we've now proved that a is even. Okay, if a cubed is even, then a is even. That's from part a. Now, if a is even, okay, then a can be expressed as 2 times some integer, so k is an element of the integers. Therefore, we can say that um, we know here that a cubed equals 2b cubed, so we can say a cubed is equal to 2 times, instead of uh, a, we can, instead of, so, sorry, instead of a, we can write 2k, so we have 2k cubed is equal to 2b cubed, so 2k cubed is going to be 8k, all cubed, equals 2b cubed. Therefore, we can say b cubed is equal to 4 times k cubed, okay? Which is the same as saying b cubed equals 2 times 2k cubed. So we know now, therefore, we can say b cubed is even. And if b cubed is even, b is even. Okay, so now we've shown that A is even, and we've shown that B is even. So therefore, we can say A over B isn't in simplest form, because when you have an even number over an even number, there's a common factor, okay, which is a common factor of 2. So A over B isn't in simplest form, therefore... Our assumption, so, okay, therefore, that, so that's a contradiction now. So let's write contradiction. That contradicts our statement. So therefore, um, our assumption, or let's put it in the same words as this. This contradicts, say this contradicts, contradicts our 
initial assumption. Okay, our initial assumption. Okay, our assumption that it was rational. So we can say, therefore, the cube root of 2 is irrational. So this proves that the root square root of 2, cube root of 2, is irrational. Okay, so we have our answer there. Okay, so basically what's happened is we have assumed that the cube root of 2 is rational, which means that it can be expressed as a over b, where a is an integer and b is an integer, and a over b in the simplest form. So if we can contradict that, if we show that, that that can't be, that's not true, then we have contradicted this, and therefore it can't be rational, it must be irrational. So we can see by logical steps that a cubed must be 2b cubed, that means a cubed is even. If a cubed is even, even from what we proved up here, then a must also be even. And then that means a can be expressed as 2 times an integer, Okay, that means we can write a cubed as 2k cubed, which will be 8 times k cubed, and therefore b cubed will be 4 times k cubed, which means that b cubed is equal to some 2 times something, so it's even, and if b cubed is even, so therefore b is also even, so we've now shown that a and b are both even, therefore a and b, a divided by b can't be in its simplest form, because you have even divided by even. So that's a contradiction of our original statement that a that a is a that um, this is a rational number because a rational number must be two integers divided in the simplest form. So therefore, cube root of two is irrational. Okay, this contradicts our initial assumption. Therefore, the cube root of two must be irrational. Okay, so there we have the answer for question number ten, part B, and that concludes um, this whole paper of. P4, October 2021. Um, other questions you might want to watch from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area over here. Other questions uh, from this topic of proof by contradiction can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. You will find the PDF version of this paper in the description of the playlist. And um, you, know, you can watch other papers that you'd like to if you look at the description of my video you'll see links to other papers um, p1 p2 p3 s1 m1 some igcse papers as well thank you for watching i hope that you do well in your exams and um, you know i hope that these videos were useful and i hope to see you sometime soon